for the uh, inaugural uh, Peter Janetta uh, Symposium. Uh, really, it's uh, been thinking about this uh, quite a bit, and I'm thrilled that uh, we're able to uh, get this uh, illustrious uh, group of, uh, of uh, friends of Peter Janetta and uh, pupils of him to come uh, here today. Uh, it's almost exactly a year ago that the University of Pittsburgh Department of Neurosurgery lost its founding department uh, uh, chairman. This was a broad and profound loss to all of us. Uh, Peter was a man of uh, true convictions. Um, he was stubborn, charismatic, and an utmost dedicated uh, neurosurgeon and academician. He changed neurosurgery in, the, in a way that very, very few have been able to do so. Um, the purpose of uh, this uh, symposium is truly to celebrate and commemorate uh, his life, his spirit of innovation, uh, and hence the, the name of the symposium, and to gather many of his disciples uh, to commemorate his legacy and demonstrate his long-lasting impact on our subspecialty, both uh, broadly uh, around the world uh, and in specific to the Department of uh, Neurosurgery here at the University uh, of uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, as you look around the room, you could think about uh, a circle of uh, life. His impact is personified by many of the people who are sitting here uh, today. I'm so grateful that so many people uh, whose uh, life uh, was impacted uh, by uh, Peter are here today, uh, both from uh, Pittsburgh, from around the country, as well as uh, uh, internationally. As, as you look around the room and think of the different people that are here, are people that have been impacted uh, by him in different ways. Uh, there are colleagues uh, who certainly learned uh, from him, uh, graduates from uh, this program who are leaders and teachers nationally uh, and internationally, uh, current and past uh, neurosurgery chairs, current and past uh, presidents of the Congress of uh, Neurosurgery. Uh, many members of our faculty clearly have been impacted uh, by him, um, very happy that uh, many of our residents uh, are here today, and I know that this is a day that you'll always remember, and hopefully will impact you in a way that will be very, very lasting, particularly in, in terms of the legacy of uh, Peter Janetta. And what's what I tell the residents, and what you can see today, is that you can make a difference. Um, you can have a procedure named after you, but that takes uh, focus, focus on a problem. Always, the goal is the patient to help uh, your patients, and how do we do things better? Whenever we have a problem, whenever a patient doesn't do well, whenever a patient has a complaint, you, you have to think, what's the problem? Analyze it, make a hypothesis, and push it forward, and be decisive and focused. And that's what, uh, that's what uh, Peter Janetta uh, did. I'd like to, as, as we move on, and I don't want to uh, forget all the people that uh, truly helped uh, put uh, this uh, together, uh, particularly thankful for, to my assistant, Diane Bruni, really spent many, many uh, hours uh, putting uh, this uh, together, uh, as well as uh, uh, others that uh, helped her, uh, Wendy Edwards, Paul Stanek, uh, Rachel Edmond, uh, Justin Meyer, Stacy McAllister, and, and Alan uh, Friday uh, really uh, helped us, and I really wanted to, to thank them uh, for putting all this together. Also, in uh, particular, I'm grateful for the contributors uh, who also uh, allowed us uh, to have this uh, event, the Janetta Society and the Janetta Neuroscience uh, Foundation, as well as uh, uh, um, Peter Janetta Jr. with the Fort Pitt Capital, KLS Martin, and Stryker. Thank you very much for your generous contributions to make uh, this day a possibility. As well as I want to acknowledge uh, the many members of the Janetta family who are here, and I'm thrilled that uh, we're able to spend a nice evening uh, together uh, last night, and thank you all uh, for coming uh, here. Now, as you might know, um, again, almost uh, just a little over a year ago, uh, I, when I was speaking with uh, uh, Walter Dandy's uh, daughter, uh, Mary Ellen Marmaduke, I invited her to come to Pittsburgh to, uh, to give a talk and you know, describe the, her father's uh, you know, legacy, what was, uh, what was uh, Walter Dandy as a person, and she said, sure, I'll come, but I want Peter Janetta to talk with me. So I invited them both, and this was uh, you know, the Wednesday before he actually uh, fell and, and, and hurt himself. So I was thrilled that both of them came 
in their wheelchairs, not because they couldn't walk, but just for, for, for help. But it was very cute to see them. There's a nice picture that, that, that you'll see outside of both of them uh, uh, together. And it was a, a wonderful and very fitting event. This was uh, uh, a, a talk for, for in front of our department, our neurosurgery residents, and the whole department uh, were there and really was, was, uh, was moving. And uh, Dr. Maroon talked about serendipity uh, last night. And this, is, this was a serendipity that uh, Peter Janetta was in his department and gave his last public speech there, which, which was uh, recorded. And I, I have a little excerpt of that, uh, of that uh, video that, uh, that uh, you could see Peter Janetta talking. And who better than Peter Janetta himself to set up the symposium? So if you can play that uh, video, please. The, the field in the 1960s had not changed tremendously in the way it was in the 1950s, 40s, et cetera, et cetera. Sure, there were, there were advances, but there weren't magnificent advances. In that era, people did not want to go to a neurosurgeon if they had any kind of a major problem. Why was that? Because people were maimed, went home maimed, or they never went home. Too many. Although the neurosurgeons were doing the best they could. So that was, that was a problem. The uh, uh, feeling that uh, you ought to get to know your patients, which I've always done and have since a couple of years after that, was something I couldn't do. So I had a wall between myself and the patients with a big problem to protect my own ego. You don't know how lucky we are now. And what has happened? We've had great ideas. The great ideas are based primarily on technology. We have uh, the microscope and its variations. We have uh, neuroanesthesia as a, as a discipline. Clinical neurophysiology. Uh, imaging. We have a uh, sheer tactic focal radio surgery, gamma knife. These, are, these have enabled us to do things which we couldn't even think about. And if you don't have the technology, you cannot think. And if you don't know anything, you can't think. But what you want to do is to get to know things. And the more you know, the better you can think. And it causes trouble. As long as you're doing what uh, Thomas Kuhn called normal science, it's fine. Normal science is what most of research is, which is problem solving, a known paradigm. If you look at the journals, that's what we see. Now, every once in a while, someone has a paper and a thread, a new paradigm. A new paradigm takes 20 years. 20 years, almost always. I mean, I saw, I stood the, started the trigeminal work as a, res, as a young resident. There's still people who are fussing about blood vessels and trigeminal neuralgia. It's incredible. And, and the, actually, the better the idea, the tougher it is. But what you're doing is interrupting a power base of people. Also, they have been burned by new ideas, and the neurosurgeons especially. But this has meant that things were, were different. Walter Dandy came in and he changed neurosurgery. If you look at his, his thousand cases a year, 1,000 cases a year, about 200 were, were discs, and he was the first man to do a lumbar disc. The rest were brain problems. And he had a very good team with him. They were, they were from general surgery. They were called the brain team, and they spent 30 months with him. But he was able to do things that no one had thought about before. He saw air under the diaphragm in a patient with a ruptured valve. He said, we could put that in the brain and see things. And that was the beginning of the ventricular gram. Then he thought, well, we can put the air up from the bottom. No need to put a hole in the head. And that was the encephalogram. I think, uh, I think uh, his words really set, uh, set the tone for the meeting uh, today.